All right. Welcome to season four. Okay, so it's February 4th and it is 60 degrees Fahrenheit right now and it just does not feel right. It, it's uh, feels, like, feels like late April. It's just kind of strange. So as you can see, we have bees flying today. It is a beautiful day. Um, I am gonna be going in here today to check the bees out, but let me just take you back about a month and tell you where we were on January 1st. Well, Happy New Year. It is January 1st and it's 46 degrees Fahrenheit and this is pretty much the exact opposite of last year at this time. Uh, last year at this time we were in a two-week period where the temperature didn't get above freezing and uh, we had many negative nights and it's just balmy out here. And I'm worried that the bees are eating through all their food. So I'm up here with fondant and sugar and I'm going to see what's going on. All right, so I don't have to take the entire Vivaldi boards off. I can just lift up the burlap and see underneath. Just take a peek here. You see, you can see the bees and you can see fondant right there in the middle, which means, you know, the cluster is usually kind of centered and they would have all that fondant gone if they were low. So there's fondant in there. There's activity. Everyone looks good. That's it. All right, I was definitely a little nervous coming up here today because it's been so warm, but I peeked into every hive and I could see fondant through the screens of all the Vivaldi boards. So there's activity in every hive. Everyone's alive January 1st. That is the update. So that was just sort of a check of the stores, and then I came out here about a week ago to check to see if the hive entrances were blocked. I wanted to make sure that the bees weren't piling up behind the mouse guards and blocking ventilation and blocking sort of their way in and out to bring out the dead. So here's what I did about a week ago. All right, very strange winter we're having this year. November was snowy and cold. December was snowless and relatively warm. January, we've had some very, very cold nights, but we had six, eight inches of snow last weekend, and then it hit 55 degrees, and all the snow melted. Uh, today, we're at about 35 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's starting to snow. Um, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, today I'm going to go and look at all the entrances of the hives, and I've brought a little tool along here to, if I need to uh, pull some bees out to open up the entrances. So. Let's go have a look and see what's going on. There's a lot of dead out front here. This is um, this is Balboa. There's a lot of bees on the front. And they're kind of piled up. That's not good. much that they couldn't get out. Definitely some losses in Balboa. Let's see if I can hear anything. It's kind of windy today, so I don't know. This is a living hive right here. Our Frank and Nuke drama hive. Yep, there's not a pile of dead bees. I mean, that's all good news. I mean, if, if that was completely filled and there was just a pile of bees there, I would think that the whole hive was gone. This is our smallest hive, which was a nuke. It's very windy out, so it's hard to hear anything. Just a few at the opening. 
Okay, so no openings on any hive are completely blocked. They all had space there um, for ventilation coming in. Oh, hello. There's a living hive. So they all had ventilation going in. Uh, they have access in and out for removing dead. And there's definitely, you know, a handful of dead out front. Like, that's like a fistful of dead bees there. That's about it. Um, so, January 27th, signs of life and uh, uh, not a lot of dead. So there we go. So, uh, uh, so I've, just, I've just never seen anything like this before. <laughs> I'm going to go by right now each hive and I'm going to properly open each one up and just, I want to check for stores, number one, but I just want to check cluster size and just see where they are. I'm fully expected today to find a dead hive or more, I don't, I don't know. Um, today would be the day that I would find one if, if one is already dead. Based on this activity, I, d I don't see evidence of anything, but we're going to find out together. So let's, let's, have, a, let's have a proper look. It's totally crazy. I'm starting in the back, in the back corner here. And out of all 12 hives, this is the hive that has the least activity going on in front. Don't know what that means, but every other hive has got things going in and out. This one seemed a little bit slow. So again, if we find a dead hive, we find a dead hive. It's fully expected. Definitely not a dead hive. Yep, there's there's tons of bees right here. So let's see see what the cluster looks like and see what their food stores look like. You know, what? I'm just I'm I'm not going to disturb them, but I see a ton of fondant right here. So I'm going to say they're okay. I don't want to open this up. They seem very chill. And there's a lot of fondant still piled up. So why don't you go back in there. All right, not a dead hive and plenty of fondant. It's nice and dry in here. Tons of fondant. All right, here's our little nuke that built up to eight frames. Yeah, fondant all in here. They're in there, they're flying. So I don't really have to open up the hives, like I don't have to lift the Vivaldi boards. I'm just looking through the hole in the Vivaldi board to see if I can see fondant in a, in a cluster. Because taking the Vivaldi board off on a day like this when they're all flying is just a giant mess. So you just peek underneath the, the burlap. I see bees, I see fondant. And I'm, I'm assuming that if I see fondant right here at the hole, wherever the cluster is, I mean, the cluster is going to be up here, and the first place they're going to eat is sort of right in the center of the hive if they need this food. So that tells me that they're probably eating down below. If this was completely gone up here, I would open this all up and feed them. But I see fondant right there. Bees and fondant right at the top. We're laying worker drama hive. No one expected this to make it, including me. Yeah, see, this one's a little different. This one, I don't see the fondant there. So I'm gonna check deeper. All right, a ton of bees just kind of came right up. So there's a lot of activity in this hive, but I don't see a lot of fondant. So I'm gonna open this up. Oh, they got plenty of sugar. Okay, see? They ate right out of the middle. That's where they're clustering, but all this sugar's still here. So, they're okay. Gotta check. Yeah, so far all the burlap is dry. We have, you know, I, there's like a maybe a little dampness, like damp. Not wet at all, not anything I'd even want to hang up to dry, just this stuff is dry. The Valdi boards are working as planned, 100%, like exactly. All right, this is double queen hive facing the wrong direction. Uh, fondant right there. Bees and fondant, right at the top of every hive. Okay, we're seven for seven, folks. 
All right, this is the Carniolan hive. All right, fondant bees right at the top. Keep saying the same thing, but it keeps happening in every hive. New package mother hive. Ditto. Just ditto. Everything's the same. All right, this is Balboa. And I'm gonna be honest, out of all the hives, Balboa had the most dead bees out front. So, a little concerned, but we shall see. First hive I've checked, I did, I did not have a pile of bees right here at this top. So, Balboa. We're gonna open up Balboa and see what's going on. Because I should see bees up here. Yeah, there's bees. Tons of fondant, tons of bees. They're kind of clustered, it seems, over here to the left. Not much going on on the right. This is a too high double deep box. Yeah, they're all over. It's not a nice neat cluster like on every other hive. So, you know, there's that. But there's a lot of bees in here and there's tons of food. So, all right. A little nervous there, but uh, definitely have a colony. The honey badgers. Ooh, that's the mouse nest. Looks like they didn't come back. Yeah, Russians are just totally clustered right there, not even moving. They're just moving really slow. Conserving energy. It's like a different kind of bee. They conserve their energy, they conserve their food, they're really mellow in the winter time. They're survivors for sure. Not the usual characteristic uh, summertime attack that I, I get here, but just looking good. And again, one more thing with the Vivaldi board. This is, this is bone dry. I'm telling you, I got this Vivaldi board thing down for moisture. This is the way to do it. All right, one more. This is a new package, Generation 2. This was a walkaway split last May. Boom. Perfect. <laughs> Today is a good day. Um, February 4th, 2019, the beginning of my fourth season. 12 out of 12 colonies are alive with food and activity in every hive. There's only one way I can properly express to you how I feel right now. Now just to be clear, this by no means guarantees all these bees will survive for the rest of the winter. This just means they made it over the hump of December, January, which is the, the worst of the worst coldness. We still have February and March where we're gonna have blip kind of warm days like this, freezing, freezing nights, and we have blizzards in April sometimes. So they still got a ways to go, and they also still have to make all their food last until May when we start to get flowers. So we're talking two and a half to three months that they still have to get through. Now, all that being said, this is a very good sign. So thank you guys so much for watching. I don't know how many bee videos I'm gonna have in the next month or so, but I am posting other videos on the channel that have to do with things we're working on on the property. If you like what you're seeing here in the bee stuff, I'm trying to do videos about all of our other projects in the same style. So you might like those, so check those out too. And you know, if you like these videos, like them, thumb them up, um, subscribe to the channel, click the bell, and the best thing you can do the coolest thing to do is to share the videos. Tell a friend. Post this wherever you post things on the Facebook and the Twitter and the Reddit and all those things. Oh, one other thing. If you want more Vino Farm in your life, you can go to Instagram.com slash Vino Farm and sort of stalk me over there because I post a lot of stuff on Instagram in between my YouTube videos. And you'll get to see the behind the scenes and things I'm working on uh, before they make it to YouTube. So th that's where you go to follow me there. So thanks for watching and uh, I'm very happy. Thanks to you guys and all your helpful comments and your support. Stay warm or cool. Stay happy. Thanks for watching. <laughs>